Um, okay, gone. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Shona. I'm from the, I guess, the January class of Green, and it's been a great network. So um, I'm going to share my screen now, and I'll just kind of go over my talk. Let me just give me a second here to get sorted. All right. So can everyone see the screen okay? Okay. So, um, you know, SDRs is kind of a broad topic, but I kind of framed it up under how to run a profitable short term rentals, like lessons I've learned, and kind of a little bit of a hybrid thing with like renting to uh, traveling medical professionals and nurses and whatnot. So I'll just kind of run through some high level stuff, like about 20 minutes or so, and there'll be lots of time for Q and A. Feel free to stop me if I'm you have questions or something top of mind, um, but I'll just kind of run through it. And um, so, you know, I think initially just like with anything in real estate, right? Like know, know your numbers, right? I mean, I love this quote, nothing ventured, nothing gained, Richard Branson. Um, it's really easy to get caught up and like, oh, I can stay there with my family, but just just know your numbers, just really like analyze it. Um, you know, there's different ways to do that. There's the DIY method. You can log into Airbnb, check out your neighborhood find similar properties, you know, it's kind of like, it's essentially like running comps, right, on, on any kind of investment property, but just make sure you're comparing apples to apples, so bedrooms to bedrooms, bathrooms, any like amenities, like a hot tub or anything like that, so that's kind of a DIY, then you can, you know, all these services, like the cost to evolve turnkey, for example, they want your business, so they will run comps for you and give you data, or there's sometimes it'll be automated, but they definitely want your business, so I would say, for serious about a property, it's worth reaching out to them to kind of vet your information or what you think your nightly rate and your occupancy rate will be. Another tool is Bigger Pockets. They're great. They have like a pro option. Their calculators are really good for kind of running analysis. Um, and they they can, they work with AirDNA. It's just another kind of uh, data site for STR. So that's kind of just a note on like, just know your numbers kind of um, into your analysis. Um, then moving on, um, you know, one metric when you're analyzing a property is COC, cash on cash return. Just essentially, how, you know, how no, your money is working for you, so you should know that number. So I won't go through this, but I'll, I'll show the deck. And this is kind of oops, um, an example of, you know, in this example, it's 27%, which is really good. And there's different metrics. So just do your research, kind of know what. And sometimes it's like, you know, part of the metric might be like, you're going to use it for your family. So it's not all numbers based. So just make sure that it's a smart business decision. Um, so just wanted to highlight that. Um, and then the other thing I think is a hot topic is like, can, um, you know, oh, sorry, my mouse is really jumpy. Um, shoot. Um, let me go back. So, you know, management, right? I, I'm very scrappy, um, probably to a fault. I self-manage. Um, I'm not saying it's for everyone. Um, I think there are a lot of tools to do it and you kind of have to decide, you know, do you have the time? If you're just starting out, it might be worth doing it. If you don't have the time and you just want to outsource it, great. Um, but there's a lot of tools like technology, like, you know, I never meet my guests. They just check in themselves. They get a code automatically. You can repair, you know, coordination stuff on a phone call. You can schedule cleaners. You know, the major benefit is the profit, right? I mean, some of these companies, you know, they take quite a bit. And so if you're just starting out, it's kind of worth just weighing the options. I totally agree to automate. And I think in the long run, you should not be in your business. You work on your business, but it's just something to think about. You can manage it. You know, it's still work, but if you really want that profit to leverage into more properties, just something to think about. Like 100% in the future, I said definitely have a manager. Um, but it's just you're losing part of your profit. And as you scale up, like maybe 10 doors or more, maybe bring a management company out. But these are just some high level notes when you're thinking about how you're going to go about managing it. Um, and then moving on. Um, so there's, you know, I just wanted to def definitions here. There's the classic short term rental calling it the traditional, essentially it's based on nightly rates, you know, and the big ones are, you know, Airbnb, VR Brothers, there's lots of other ones. They're generally highly profitable. They're great for destination areas, like popular neighborhoods, or if there's a big attraction, um, you know, they're generally great. The cons are, it's, it's a lot more management. It's like constant turnover. And if you're like a lot of minor and kind of quieter neighborhoods, so they're not like destination areas. So I I had Airbnbs and it just kind of the numbers weren't penciling out. So I kind of switched. Not sure this is the right terminology. I'm calling it a hybrid SDR. So I shoot for like a three to six month lease. And my target is generally traveling medical professionals or a lot of times people are moving to the area and they want a place to land before they buy a house. They want to live in the neighborhood. But when you come in, it feels like an Airbnb. The beds are made. It's 
it's got all the amenities, but it's just, it's a little easier to self-manage and you can charge a premium. Like, you know, I can, for a two bedroom, one bath unfurnished, I, I, you know, I can charge a lot more for furnished, but it's, so it's kind of an STR. It's just a little bit longer term. And I found it, it's a sweet spot for me because I'm self-managing. So I'm not, I mean, I had cleaners and I had managers, but I still have to oversee it. So for me, I've, it's a niche that I really like. And I've, I think you guys have heard of Furnish Finder. I got a lot of leads from there. It's a hundred bucks a year. It's well worth it. And there's also Facebook groups and other places to advertise. But for me, I have three of them now and it's been really profitable for me. So, um, and if you go down the hybrid kind of STR model, um, I just, it's kind of essentially like a long-term rental. If you are doing it yourself, you want to screen really thoroughly you know, background credit check, you want to talk to your leads, just have a conversation and describe, describe all the quirks of the property. I make sure it's a good fit for them. It's a good fit for me. Obviously check your references, uh, coworkers, character references, verify employment, kind of like a regular rental, right? And if this is not for you, like um, hire someone to do it, right? I'm just going, if you go down this path of doing it yourself, you know, collect the deposit. I collect all my rent online. I use apartments.com. It's really seamless. The rent comes in, the mortgage goes out. Um, I also recommend, you know, taking your iPhone and doing a video tour. A lot of times people are out of state and they're not going to see it. And it just gives them a better feel of the space. You can get fancy and do like a 3D tour. But for the most part, I just upload it to YouTube. And I'm like, here's a video of it. And they really get to see the space. And this makes them feel more comfortable. And, you know, since they probably aren't going to see it before they they sign a lease. Um, and then rental leases, you know, it's it's kind of a formal lease when you're doing like a three month engagement, just like a year lease, but it's furnished and you're charging a little more. So my, you know, tip is just find leases that are, you know, that are, comply with state laws um, and that you can sign digitally. Like I have, I have an example, I use tenant tech, it's Oregon specific, but I can create my leases, I can sign them digitally. So it's pretty seamless. There's no paper, there's no scanning, they can log in and sign it and review it. So that's just, Kind of if you decide to go the self-management um, route um, on longer term. I mean, it's kind of like corporate housing. That's another kind of word for it. Um, the other thing, and so then we kind of get into management, right? Um, you know, it's the team, not the individual. It's the ultimate champion. Like you definitely want to have a team, even if you are self-managing. You want your housekeeper. They're so important, right? I mean, the, you, I you have to be spotless. You can't have a crumb anywhere. It has to just walk in and be like, this is really clean. Um, I don't recommend, don't go hourly, just say, hey, this is like, ask them because it can kind of fluctuate and you need to build your numbers against that. And, and usually I can tell you that it should take them, if it's extra messy, maybe once in a while, but you really want to be like, hey, I'm looking for an hourly rate. Um, and then again, if you're doing a traditional short term, you can, if they're charging you a hundred, you can charge like 150, you can make a little profit off of your cleaning. Um, there's the restocking part, and this is more traditional STRs, right? There's like, I mean, toilet paper, soap, all the stuff. Um, I've had people take care of that. I had a co-host for a while. So just decide who's doing that. You can like drop ship it or you can have your housekeeper. Like I, they would run to the store for me and just give me a receipt. Um, so you just have to figure all that out. Um, then taxes, you know, just get a W-9, make sure you get invoices, um, bookkeep. I usually use Venmo, but you just decide how you're going to pay them because it gets a little annoying to pay them after every turnover. So maybe it's bi-weekly or whatever, whatever helps them. Um, the other key person in uh, your team is your handyman, you know, like something squeaky or it breaks. You just want to have that person on the ground to go check it out. Um, and they're also your boots on the ground if it's kind of a remote thing. So that's kind of overview of management. Um, and then, um, you know, I, this is again, you know, you can, I totally recommend hiring a company. Again, it's just weighing your profits. I'm kind of going down the self-management route. If this, there's a lot of uh, tools out there that people may not know about. Um, so I love this quote, when your business runs like clockwork, you can go off the clock, right? So it's just finding the right tools to help automate and streamline your self-management with these core apps. So the number one is channel manager. So a channel manager essentially is a system for organizing and sorting communications across several channels. So like, you know, I was primarily an Airbnb and VRB out. I have to, I'd have to log into each one, which is annoying because you missed messages. This kind of takes all the information into one concise system. It will do your calendar syncing. You'll have an inbox for multiple channels. You can respond to guests from one place. You can set auto responders. Like I, you know, you have to have very detailed check-in notes. Like, okay, you know, here's where to park. Here's how to turn the heat on. Here's where the water, I mean, the filtered water and you just you make you automate that it goes out 24 hours before they come you can automate an automated check-in so and you, you still will have questions but it's just 
all of those little details can be automated, which is very helpful because they don't, it's not hard. It's just kind of, it takes a lot of time to do that manually. Um, again, yeah, automate your check-in instructions, your door code, you know, halfway point, check out instructions. It's just, there's, and then you're just kind of like you, and you, you kind of, you're constantly tweaking these notes, right? Um, but you start with something and you tweak them. So I'm just listing here some popular channel manager apps. There's your Porter app, IGMS, Guestly, Hostfully. These are all linked and I will share the stack, but just these are, it's a really handy thing. It's kind of a more modern way to manage. Um, the other one, and some of these are bundled, but I'm kind of breaking them out separately. So the core app number two is dynamic pricing. So initially you kind of want to have a strategy where you're really, you're pretty affordable. Can you undercut your competitors just to get your bookings up, right? Because you need those first reviews. It's kind of, nobody wants to stay at a place with no reviews. And as you get your reviews up, you can start increasing your price and you, you know, more reviews. So it's kind of like a slow burn a little bit. Um, but then as you have more bookings, you, you know, you want to automate the pricing manager because there's, It'll pull, you know, so there's tools that will do that. So it'll look at similar properties and, you know, pricers accordingly. They'll, they'll optimize based on the price per night and number of factors like day of week, holidays, special events. So they'll maybe shoot up when there's a big holiday like Christmas or Thanksgiving. They're gonna, you're going to charge more and then it'll go. If it's like, oh, it's, a sl it's slow coming up, dead January, let's cut it down so we have the income, right? It just kind of dynamically does it because doing it manually, it's like you set it and then you forget it and you're like, oh, I didn't change the rate and someone books it and you're like, oh, it was a holiday. I like forgot that it was a holiday. I could have, and you're not trying to price gouge, but it is a lot of work and this is a business. So you do want to manage that. So this is a great tool just to automate it. Um, um, and then we go into scheduling manager, right? One of the biggest things when I was doing it myself, is like, I text the bookkeeper, hey, we've got a turnover. Can you do it? Yes. And then you're just kind of constantly kind of micromanaging these things. But there are scheduling manager apps um, that will notify your housekeeper when they're ready to clean. And then the housekeeper will acknowledge that. And then you get a note. Um, and, you know, if, we, if your housekeeper doesn't have a smartphone, if that's the real barrier, you know, Chromebooks aren't that expensive. It's a business expense. I get one at Costco and set them up with it. And it's a you know, for the for the ease of use, it's worth looking into that. And so I listed a couple apps, Turnover, BNB, and Automate BNB. So again, these aren't, you don't have to use these, are just tools out there. And sometimes they're all bundled into one, right? So it's not like you have to have three different tools, but these are kind of the core things that you, if you are going to do it, that you, you know, would definitely want to consider. Um, you know, just Real high level operation stuff, you know, you know, know your STR license laws. They're very strict in Portland. Um, I, yeah, I've had to get creative. Um, so just know that before you go into it. And some places don't have strict laws, but just, you know, don't get into thinking you have an STR strategy and then you can't rent it because there's, it's obviously a tricky thing. There's housing shortages and people are making a lot of money off STR. So for example, Hawaii has very strict laws, right? Because it's a housing shortage. So just kind of know, what your laws are and get licensed. Um, and then budget for your furnishings. Like even if it's small, I think 5K, it sounds crazy and I'm very scrappy. I'll get stuff on Amazon, I'll source it locally. Just kind of itemize your list. Like I need a bed, I need a mattress, I need bed, nightstand tables, lights, all the stuff, the linens, it really adds up. It's kind of shocking. And I, I, I do have a spreadsheet I can share that kind of outlines it. Um, and then decide, you know, do you want to uh, self-manage or hire a manager and sometimes like maybe when you're starting it's like I had a co-host that kind of helped me and then it got slow when COVID hit so I kind of took it back but just make that decision and you don't you're not stuck with it but just kind of weigh your options I know Reen teaches how to get a manager I totally agree with that sometimes like if cash flow is short it might be worth it to, if you have family that can help but just kind of weigh your options there's pros and cons to both um and then I'm you have to be just general note here, very detailed house notes. Like I will write like how to water the plants. Like, again, the lights come on automatically, every little detail. And I, you know, I'll like label light switches. This is the dimmer switch. It's kind of silly, but when you walk into a house, like you don't know how it works. I had a new construction house we had a mini split and um, we bought it in the summer and we never stayed there. So I thought it was just AC. It sounds dumb now. And so we had guests in the winter and it snowed in Portland and I didn't know that there was heat. And we, and so it was just a stu stupid thing of like, they didn't know how to use the system and they were really unhappy and I felt terrible. So just, you know, write very clear to turn the remote on, press this button, pre like, like do it so kind of fundamental that anyone can understand it. And it sounds silly, but it just alleviates like 
walking in somewhere not knowing how things work and it alleviates like these questions and stuff. And again, I have an example I'm happy to share of how I do that. Um, so then, you know, I thought I would go into amenities, amenities, which to me are kind of set your place apart. Like one of ours, we're a, you know, a plus listing, which is this like Airbnb silly marketing thing. But there's certain things that I've found I really like, like I definitely recommend a smart lock. Um, you can actually open the door remotely. It'll automatically send the guest um, the code to the door just really streamlines that you can use a lock box, but then you're like late at night fumbling with the box and half the time people can't open it. It's just, it's like magic. You, you're like, oh, I can't get in. You open the door and you can tell when they, and I don't look at it a lot, but I can I have insight if they got in okay or if they're having an issue. Um, again, a smart doorbell, it just helps for, it's like a little security thing. I usually don't put crazy security systems in, but, and I don't ever look at it. I'm not spying on people like, oh, you had guests come, but it's just another kind of security measure. Um, High-speed Wi-Fi is mandatory. I think we all know that. I have a lot of guests that will come maybe for a month. They're working remotely. Um, I always include a smart TV. Again, I think this stuff is kind of, we're all used to it, but I usually include a couple of services like Amazon um, Prime and Netflix, and people can also log into their own accounts. I just give kind of the basics so you can just pop down and watch something, and it's just kind of a generic account. Um, I usually do like an Amazon Alexa or a Bluetooth speaker. So guests can just have the music on just another, like it's not mandatory, but it just kind of adds to the overall experience and the like amenities. Um, and then to me, I like to go the extra mile. You know, I do a welcome basket. I leave out a bottle of wine and they're like $6 bottles of wine. I get a grocery outlet. I leave out some chocolate, microwave popcorn. So you get in, you can have some popcorn and wine and it's, it's an extra step, but I just feel like, you know, you're tired from traveling. It just, it's like a nice little welcome thing. And also I think it helps with reviews. Um, and then you can just a little note, like welcome, hope you enjoy your stay. You don't have to, you can reuse it too, right? It's just a nice little touch. Um, and then overall amenities like kitchen, you want to have paper towels, hand towels, kitchen soap, sponge, dish brush. Drinks, I always put like some starter coffee. I don't put like a pound in, right? Tea, non-dairy cream or sugar. And I initially I was like, oh, I'm going to source it all locally and it'll be so cute. And then I'm like, okay, that's a lot of work. I'm going to buy it in bulk. And like, you know, if I had like a whole system, but it, for me, it wasn't worth buying local stuff, but I think that's the extra. I mean, if it's a really premium, you could do that or maybe partner with a local coffee company for delivery. Um, but those are just kind of my high level amenities. Um, and then I come to the extras, you know, kitchen, I like to put the basics in olive oil, salt, pepper, grinder, sugar, right? Just kind of if you're making some eggs, you don't want to have to go buy olive oil. Um, bathroom, you know, I extra rolls of toilet paper, Q-tips, cotton balls, I put them in the little glass jars, um, face cleaner wipes so people don't get the towels, funky hand soap, body wash, shampoo, not bath salts. This is a, I mean, there's soap is mandatory. Um, again, and try and get like refillable things so you're not constantly buying bottles of stuff. Um, dried flowers are kind of a nice touch because, um, you know, they don't, they don't die and it's just like a nice little design touch. I like to have like a little library, not like a crazy collection, but you know, we all have smartphones, but sometimes you want to sit down and just look at a book, like a local guidebook. And um, so I usually have that. Um, I'll maybe have a local magazine, you know, a couple of novels, and maybe a cookbook. And I don't like it. I like it very curated, but it's just a little collection. If you, you know, we're always on our smartphones. Yes, we can Google anything, but sometimes you just want like, I have like a quirky book. Why, why, you know, it has all the quirky Portland things. So whatever your area is known for, right? Like we're known for being quirky yet. So I have a book about that. So it's just the little touches that kind of give it the local flavor. Um, then there's the fun stuff, like a record player. It's pretty cheap. You get some albums. It's just kind of like, we, you know, it's, we're all so digital these days. So it's put a record player in just the paper and pencil, right? For quick notes, um, a reusable shopping bag. If you're going out, it could be like branded with something local. Universal chargers, people always forget their chargers, right? And I kind of label them with like a sticky thing so they don't get taken by accident. In Portland, you know, it rains a lot. So I have loaner umbrellas. Um, and then just cozy blankets, throws. It just kind of adds a touch of color and coziness. Again, you don't, this is mandatory, but when you walk in, it just kind of adds to that feeling of like coziness and thoughtfulness. Um, Okay, and then this is the last slide, I promise. Um, you know, this is my kind of brain download of things I've learned. I literally label everything. Like I said, I'm like the cadet here is turn it off when you check out, like very kind of silly. And then 
you know, when the lights come on automatically, I write, you know, lights will come on automatically because I, I don't, oh, that's another tip. Like, I don't like people getting in and it's dark. So I make my lights come on automatically. So when they come in at night, the porch light, it's either a smart bulb or you can put a sensor in it. And it just, because I don't like people coming to like a dark house and I will also leave a light on inside so it doesn't look empty. Um, and then I have, I have like a one page sheet. So when they get in, I leave that out. And it's like very high level. It's like, where's the Wi-Fi and the password? How to use the heat? And then I have the detailed house notes. I think sometimes people just want like a scan, something to scan. And so I, I, you know, you send the house notes out. I also like to print them because sometimes you miss it or you're like rushing and you're like, oh, how do I do this? And you can just like read it. Um, again, you know, maximize your space. I know Reen's mentioned like a bunk room to get more people. Um, I like to add local flavor, like local artwork, locally sourced decor. Like I generally order stuff online, but I'll try and find things that are kind of like unique to the area to just make it a little more personal. List your local attractions and favorites. I'm sure you've all been to Airbnbs where you see like the local nodes. I like to add plants. I think it's a nice touch and they surprisingly for the most part survive. I just have very detailed notes and it just adds another kind of layer of warmth and coziness. Um, and again, in the nitty gritty here, you know, mattress covers, like get a bed bug, you know, I ordered cheap mattresses, but they're totally encased in this like cover. So if, I've never had a problem with that, but mattresses are expensive. So you just basically cover it. And I have a link here where to order it. Um, yeah, I have a mattress recommendation. It's like, I think it's like three or $400 and it's really comfortable. Um, and then I just generally, you know, to find your resources. Uh, like Candyman and Cleaners, Angie's List, Thumbtack, Facebook Marketplace, Home Advisor. You can ask your neighbors who their housekeepers are. Um, another tip is you never want to cancel your reservations because the apps, that's like a, a real negative thing. So you kind of say, oh, you know, I had a, would you mind canceling? Because if you do it, you'll get dinged and your ratings go down because they want to see you as a reliable host. So just I mean, do your utmost to never cancel the reservation or just explain why you can't accommodate them if you have to. Um, again, a pictures are worth a thousand words, which we all know this. And Airbnb, I don't know if they still do it, but all my properties, they if you're up with them, they'll give you, they'll offer you a photographer, right? And it's pretty discounted, but like start, you can start out with your own pictures, but put a filter on them because like it's surprising out people don't it really changes the vibe of the space, make sure the lighting is good, it's nice and airy and no clutter it just really helps sell it you can have a great space and bad pictures and it's, it, it's not going to rent as well so that's just a tip i wanted to share um and i have some resources here i have a furnishing list i can email this out i have sample guest notes again it's, if you want it i'll share it um this is a really great book short-term rental long-term wealth it's very detailed it kind of talks a lot about self-management and this is an article on um, kind of those channel apps that I mentioned, um, if you want to dive more into that. So that's my spiel. I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs> Whoa, Shauna, this is awesome. What a, what a job you have done. <laughs> Not just doing it, but putting this together and putting all those details for us. This is so great. We appreciate that. Oh my God, I'm like, I was trying to take it on. Like, how she pulled this together? <laughs> and it, it was yesterday. It, it, it's really well you did a good job because i was like okay let me ask her this question and then by the time you went for the other slides like okay there she goes she just answered me like um on the last slide um i was going to ask you about if you hire a professional photograph and then you just said it at the end you know i'm like oh my god it's is you did an awesome job shana thank you I appreciate this it. is awesome okay so ladies you could raise your hands if you have question oh, already jennifer go ahead <laughs> Shana, thanks so much. That was a lot of really good information. I have a question because I just started a, a short-term rental. Unfortunately, it's it's in another state, so I do have to have it uh, managed. But I was mm -hmm. just curious, are you using instant booking on Airbnb or are you vetting your, uh, uh, your guests a little bit more? How are you handling that? That's a really great question. And I always had kind of an internal debate. Like they, they want you to do instant booking, yes. so they favor it, right? But you know, you can you so you can set your levels of um, kind of like what your requirements are. They have to have an ID. I kind of always went back and forth on it. Like they really push you to it, but I 
I, I think in the end, I kind of wanted to control. But here's the thing. And I also, the other thing I didn't mention is like, I don't like, I want a minimum. Like at the end, I was like four nights. I'm not, one night is just not worth it. So like, it depends. Like set your, if you're going to do that, they definitely favor it, but set your filters up. So if you can't just book like one night and then you're screwing, like it, you know, or holidays is a minimum of five nights. Just set your filters and I would say play with it. But it's, I had mixed feelings about it, to be honest. I don't have a straight answer. It kind of annoyed me that they kept pushing it. And I know that the algorithms favored it, but I didn't like the lots of control, but you can control. I would just say dial in your settings really well and it's okay. Um, and just make sure they have to have reviews. You know, if it's not, you know, if it's if it's a purely STR and it's a purely a business thing, I think there is something, instant booking is nice. Like when I'm looking and I have to wait for someone to respond, I'm like, oh, I'm on to the next thing. I think we all want that instant gratification. So I'd say dial in your kind of criteria. And and I think I think it is, and if you do it right, I think it's a good idea. It's just, I'm long-winded here, but that's my... <laughs> So, no, I, I appreciate that. I was doing the same thing going back and forth just because, yeah, I want to know who's staying there. And it and it's kind of nice to build a little bit of that rapport like, oh, hey, what are you doing in town? You know, mm -hmm. um, but I know I they were really pushing it. And I like for now, until I get a little bit more comfortable, I, I'm leaving off the instant book just so I can get a, get a feel for things. And then maybe later. Um, well, you know, I'll put that back. I'll put it on because it is nice. I know I was just thinking from my personal experience, I like being able to oop just quickly. Oh, right. Great. Yeah, I like this place. Um, <laughs> that's it. And you're right. Check it off the list. So anyway, I appreciate your insights. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. I think you're the right strategies. I mean, especially when you're new, it's a real learning curve. And you, I would keep that until you're comfortable. And then you kind of yeah, and I've never had I've had pain in the butt, I guess I've never had I've, I've had some strange things, but nothing more like for the most part, I've, I've had pretty good guess. And there's always a risk in anything, right? Like life's just risky. So you have to weigh it out. So yeah. Yeah. I think you have the right strategy. Okay. Our next question is Cecilia from Cecilia. Hello. I'm going to turn my camera on. My internet is going up and down. Hi, Shana. I have a question. So sure. I'm looking into start a short-term rental north of Georgia. Um, I do have the cash to do the 20% down. The part that I don't know which comes first, the egg or the chicken, is how do I know how much can I afford? Should I go to a lender and start conversations with them and see? Yeah, I yeah, I would I would get I think getting pre qual I've done a lot of you know 20% down. I mean the other the other kind of loan you can get is like a, a as like a non-QM, so it's not, not based on your, it's based on the rent roll kind of loan, so that's another type of loan, but yeah, you kind of want to know, so you don't start shopping, it's good to know like what you'll qualify for, like debt to income and all that mumbo jumbo, so I do think it's good to know, but maybe kind of do some research and say, I, I, you know, I'm looking for this kind of a property, and, but it's good to know like what you'll qualify for, because of course, when you make the offer, they're going to want all that, so yeah, um, but our last one was a, it's like a, it's, you put the 20%. So here's the thing is so I'm trying to say that I, we're self-employed, so we're hard to qualify for. But so if you have like, we had a chunk of money that we didn't have the W-2. So there is something called a, it's like an asset-based loan, right? It's based on the projected <laughs> revenue income. So you might be able to get into a higher loan with that versus like your, it's, so it's not based on like, you make X amount. Cause they're always like, well, you can you cover it? I'm like, well, I'm getting income. So if it's an asset-based loan, I would just, look into both options versus the traditional 20%, right? So an asset-based loan is you might be able to get a little higher. It might be a little more flexible too, to think about. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question is from Dr. Bernita. Bernita, Bernita. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Uh, Shana, this was, this was wonderful. This is my first time, but amazingly, this is exactly what I want to focus on after some wholesales, of course. So. But um, question, Luisa, would this um, video, this uh, recording be shared? Can yes, share Shana, yeah, Shana wants to share it on the main Facebook um, ring, so okay. it's gonna be there. And I could put it to our folder as well. And you know, you always, ladies could go in and just click on the link. Okay, and the next thing, Shana, you have the house notes and sample guest notes email on request. Uh, do we put, put it in Facebook that we would like it or email you directly? 
Yeah, you know, if you uh, you could um put it in the notes and I can download that um in the after the chat. Um yeah, or Louisa, if you want to do like a group email or something. Yeah, either way. Um I'm trying to think what's the best way. Maybe just in the notes on this Zoom. That way I'll just do it right after so I don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> so, put it in the chat. In the chat, yeah, yeah let's just do that. And again, okay. it's like it's not like generic, it's like for a specific property, but it then you just obviously customize it right to your specific property but it's just okay. like more of a level of detail that I go into so I don't you know and it's not like it's, it's not complicated it's just like a template I kind of came up with so yeah I'm happy just thank you for being so thorough this is wonderful okay <laughs> yeah just so we could send that those um to you or you could just save the, the chat after um oh, someone also asked me if you could share the the presentation with us yeah. For okay. sure, I will. Um, I'll I'll shoot you a PDF of it, and then yep. I'll probably share it on. Yeah, but I'll just say you can share it specifically. With okay. Group. Or yeah. or if you want to share the presentation with that on the on the main one, you you'll be free. I'll send you the link. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and then okay. Um, Terry, it's your turn. Unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry about that. I just <laughs> actually got to my son, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> So I did arrive safely. Um, Shauna, again, this is so good. I appreciate um, you taking the time out because I know you're on the West Coast, so it's pretty early for you. So I appreciate you um, taking time out for you all, for, for us all. But I do have a question for you. Um, do you own all of your short-term short rentals? I've been uh, doing some research and I've run into something called rental arbitrage. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I know you probably know what that is. A lot of, of the ladies might not. Um, are you familiar with rental arbitrage and do you do any? I, yeah, so I do, it, I am familiar with it. Essentially what it is, is you are approaching like an apartment or a home and saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rent this from you at kind of a, you know, either a fixed price, but I'm going to have the option to sub like sublease it essentially and then you, you're really yes. up front you know the, but the benefit for the the um the benefit for the owner is of the property is you you kind of say i'm going to keep it in really great shape i'm going to repair everything so i'm not going to bother you with that stuff and it's going to be consistent income so that's kind of the benefit and a lot of times i've heard it with you know apartment complexes that are under rented you kind of go to them and make the business case of like hey we're gonna i you know i think it's I think it's a, I have all, I own online. I do think it's a great kind of way to get into this and see if you like it. I mean, the, the you know, in that sense, I think it can be a great cash flow generator. Um, it's a great way to get into it. I think you have to kind of work on your sales pitch and maybe make a business case for why it's a good idea and all the benefits for the, the owner, right? Because I might be like, well, that's kind of sketchy, but it's like, no, I'm, you know, this is my target audience. I'm I'm having these nurses come in. They're very responsible. They're nurses. They're not going to party. They're going to be in and out. They're going to sleep here and they just need a comfortable place. You know, so I think in that sense, it's a great way to get your feet wet and try it out. I see the cons are that, um, you know, you're investing in all the furniture, right? So you don't, I mean, that's a big upfront investment. And then, you know, you're not building the benefits of a long-term asset, you know, with the tax benefits and all that. But I do think it's a creative way to get into it. I think you have to kind of get your pitch down and how to do it. So I've heard of it, I'm intrigued by it, but I've kind of bootstrapped myself into renting them. But I think especially for maybe like a real destination area, if you find a great rental and you can kind of explain it, it's it's a cool concept. So I, I think it's definitely, on the, you know, it's a creative angle for sure. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm asking is because I am a pharmacist in a hospital and we have a lot of traveling nurses and of course, most of them, um, they do rent out the Airbnb. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of feedback as to, you know, what they would prefer and these different things. And I really want to get started, but I don't have the funds to really just buy something right now. Right. So yeah. I was, <laughs> so, and that's the exact audience that I'm targeting, um, nurse, um, health professionals. So just kind of want to get your feedback about that, but I appreciate you and, um, thank you for answering my question. I think it is something that I am going to look into, especially since I'm at the hospital with all of these nurses that are traveling and they need somewhere to stay. But yeah, no, I think in that, like, I, that is my main market and they're so great and appreciative. And I think like, I, there's a lot of. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And you can, you know, you can, 
the amount you can charge for rent for an unfurnished versus furnished is, is quite a bit higher. And you're also, I mean, to me, it's a service. It's like you're providing a comfortable place for these people to come and they're not, you know, it's, it's quality, you know what they're looking for. So I think it's a great way to get in. I think you just really have to like really get clear on the business case when you explain it to someone. Cause it's kind of a little, it's out of the normal, right? To just really kind of get clear in your head why, why it's so great and why it's a huge benefit. Like you're taking care of repairs and they have consistent, you know, they're, you're gonna, you might do it, you know, to your lease or something so i i think it's especially with what you're doing if it would be an easier solve and like hey i'm putting on airbnb and i'm gonna have random people in and out right so i think right. it's a smart exactly. idea okay mm -hmm. yeah because i have the market so i appreciate it thank you sharon yeah no problem shana before we move to the next question this is the question that i sent you and you were saying something about arbitrating is this one is similar to the question that i sent you the question okay. was um question that i have is I would like to know if they are familiar with and can speak on obtaining STR without purchasing cooperated listing. I think that's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. I mean, it's, it's called. I don't know rental arbitrage. I think it's kind of like that hybrid thing. You just you you find a place that you like. You go to the owner and you say, or like a management company, and you know this is my business, and you explain the benefits of it again. Like you know, you're taking care of repairs. You're going to really keep it up because you're renting it, and you explain. You know, I think you just kind of alleviate any like concerns people might have about parties or things. And you know, I think the benefit is like you're you're going to take care of the leaky thing. You're kind of going the extra mile. So that's like, yeah, that's that's arbitrage. I think that's I think I answered it. It's so. similar. Yeah. Okay. She's not on the call, but she wanted to make sure for me to ask you that question. And then we could go to the um, other question that I sent you after um, Jennifer. Jennifer has another question. Go ahead, Jennifer. Hello again. Um, um, Shauna, do you have, um, when you are looking for, um, you know, purchases and things like that, do you have a minimum kind of cash on cash return that you are looking at when specifically for STRs? That's a what really good question. I, um, I'm pretty, I, 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 I tend to kind of be impulsive and gut driven. So like the last ones I've done, I, did, I was very kind of, this is not mathematical. I was like, I, I knew I could get more rent out of it. So I just kind of went, like, I looked at like very basically it wasn't cash on cash. It was like, I can get X amount for unfurnished. And I just, and one, so one of them was like intentional. The next one was like, we had it as our office and it was half furnished. And I'm like, I bet if I furnish it, I could get this much more rent. So it was more just like, it was more cash flow based. Like I was running the numbers against like unfurnished, I'll get like maybe 1800 furnished, I can get 2,700. And so, you know, you look at the initial investment, but, and then last one I did was, it was like this basement apartment that just, it was just kind of like, how did, did not have a great vibe. I didn't like the people I was getting. It just, I, and I'm like, I bet if I furnish it, I can, you know, I was looking to get probably just, this is very basic math here. I think I could have gotten maybe 16 to 1800, you know, unfurnished, but furnished, I'm getting 2,500. So, you know, I haven't done the cash on cash, but to me, just like very basically, it made sense in the long run after furnishing costs, the cash flow was just that much higher i mean with that comes right the extra management and turnovers are like it has to be dialed in i have i have cleaners but i always have to go in there and fuss around with everything that's just how i am um which you don't have to do that but it's more just like hey there's so much more cash flow here and it's more work but like for me like this is my full-time thing so i um that was just the cash flow that's kind of what i based it on um versus like super and i guess i'm I was, this was always kind of a side thing for me. And I've now I'm more, you know, it's my, it's a business now, but it, it's a bit of gut and, you know, and then, but, you know, big, I would say bigger pockets have some really great, um, very high level calculators that you put in like your cost to buy it, what your rental income is. And it kind of spits out this very great kind of analysis, very high level, but it's definitely worth, um, you know, just running numbers quickly and analyzing deals. So I think that's a really good tool for that kind of thing. Like, hey, I'm looking at this, what are, what are high level? And then you want to get into your spreadsheets, right? But it just gives you that practice and like, is it a good investment or is it not? And it'll, it'll do all those calculations for you. Okay, so I, okay. I really recommend that, yeah. 
All right. Yeah, I keep, I keep, it's on my to-do list and I keep forgetting. I need to get on there and just check them out. And so, so I can start and kind of incorporating them into what I do when I'm, when I'm evaluating deals and things. So, so good. Yeah. I, I kind of like you just wanted to say, okay, cause I'm really more into cash flow. I want to see what we can get. And mm-hmm. so, so yeah, I, I appreciate, I appreciate your answer. Yeah. No, I mean, there is, there is what kills me is kind of like, and I usually, it's like, I'll put it on a credit card. It's like the furnishing it. And it's just, I mean, it just adds up. It's like, cause you have to get like plates and cups and spoons. And the last one, I just, I basically just ordered everything. So I kind of know what I need and I, you know, but you can go to Goodwill and you can, you know, you can have a mix of like, you can find decent new stuff, but it's just, it, I mean, the math, it all just has that. But then once you have it, you know, you don't have to re- keep redoing that. And then it gets more profitable, right? So you just have to think about that initial investment. Um, that's an upfront cost. But after that, I think it's, you know, I haven't found a management company to kind of this short, like, you know, three to six month thing, but I love, like, I just got a six month lease. I'm like, oh, so nice. I don't have to worry about a turnover. So, <laughs> um, cause the short term, sure. like it's, it's great. I mean, if you're in an area, but it's, it's just a lot of, even with a, someone managing it, you still kind of have to worry about it a little bit. So I like the, the nurse, the traveling nurse market. Cause I get longer stints. So Yes. but it's still that's, it's still flexible so yeah true. that's because that's kind of where my niche is too it's it's traveling nurses so i like that i totally love that and it's just it's like okay once they're in you, i don't have to worry about it so much so I, I, i'm very comfortable with that yeah i mean i don't even meet them i just i i, I kind of treat it like an airbnb guest and i check in and say do you have any questions but they they self check in i don't have to be there you know so in that sense it's like a, a traditional str but yeah and then i'm like i should probably like see how they're doing just kind of like here's all the stuff and then they just kind of they're fine usually um I, but yeah so it's yeah I, I like to automate as much as I can and make it like easy check in and you know I don't need to be there to give them a key like my mom runs a vacation rentals and she's so old school I mean it's just it's, she has to meet them and she does like paper receipts and it's just like oh. anyway so I think yeah. for me that that I just really like to find the tools that make things easier and for guests too like they don't want to have to meet someone they just want to get in there and unload and you know, versus meeting the owner that's going to talk to them. <laughs> so, True. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I saw Lakeisha. I saw your hand, but I don't see it anymore. It was your question answer. Yes, my question was answered. Thank you so much. I'm enjoying the presentation. Great. Thank you. Oh, good. Awesome. Look at you on that chair. <laughs> so yes, I have. I, I am getting a medic here. Oh, enjoying <laughs> yourself there. That way to go. You need to treat yourself. Yes. Terry has another follow up question. Go ahead, Terry. Okay. I just wanted to ask, um, do you have any more, do you have any long term rentals right now or are you just doing hybrids and short term rentals, Sean? I yeah, my bread and butter, so to speak. And actually in the back of this deck, I'll just show you. I have, I mean, all of my rentals, you can um yeah, I have all my rentals and I have kind of a breakdown. I, you know, I like the mix and what I, my sweet spot is I really like duplexes where I can do half long-term and half STR that way. Like Love if there it. is a little bit of a break, I don't, the cash flow isn't like when, cause it, you know, I have a mortgage mm. and all these, so I have to like constantly make sure. So I like the like, and I would love to get into multifamily and kind of that mix of them. So you're, you know, you're kind of getting the premium rent and then, but then you have the consistency of like just the regular rent coming in. So yeah, I have mostly fine holds and then I have some STRs. So, um, I love yeah, the way you so, think, love the way yeah. you think. Mm, very smart. I'm, okay. Thank you, hon. Yeah. 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 I'm scrappy. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I remember there was one bluish. What is it? I remember you posting that in the group when you did the fence. I felt in love with those fence. Oh, the, yes. That the fence, one. This, was like, this house like has zero curbside appeal. Like, I don't know. It just the fence just, and you know, the other thing is like, I, I do allow, I, I do allow pets and STRs. Not everyone does. I screen heavily. I get the carpets cleaned. I feel like they're part of your family. And I done a lot of pit bulls just because I've had some issues, but I, I do. And there's sometimes a little carpet damage, but I think for the most part, people appreciate that you allow pets. So I do allow pets um, and, and they, people always want fenced yards. So I always try and, you know, in, in this case in particular too, I have like the front has the front yard and the, and the, the unit downstairs has like the backyard. So they're very defined spaces so that when dogs, the dogs don't mingle. 
<laughs> yeah, no, and, and the fans just like gave the house a pop. Like I wouldn't thought of it, but when I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, the house looks so different. Yeah, yeah, it really, <laughs> I think we got a good deal because they just, like we painted the cabinets and they were this horrible. You can see like in this picture, they, I painted them white and put hardware on them. And then I put a, I, it's called a micro hood. It's like a microwave and a, a, a vent. Mm -hmm. and, and the just, hood, yeah. You know, and I put a light and it was like the floors were there, the countertops were there, but just like painting the cabinets, like this basement was just funky. And I painted it and put lights up and there was some baseboards missing. Like little, it was like a very light, like touches that made it just feel like less creepy, I guess. Like it was just, <laughs> Just you went out in this basement and there was no door on it. So like stuff like that, you know, and like you can see here, I have like, the, I, it's a little cluttered in this picture, but I put like the basics out, um, like a toaster and coffee maker and a water kettle, just the things that you would want, right? If you're staying somewhere, so. Um, yes, yeah. yes, you really make a comfortable look. So on the question that I got yesterday that I forward you, you answer one of them. And then the second one is kind of, she said, does your, cleaning people are there they seem okay with the consistency like you know because they go how often they need to clean so if you keep it for three months they only really doing like four time cleaning oh i'm just saying like i'm saying the three months oh, but... yeah yeah no so i my cleaners they're they kind of have house they do house cleaning so they have their consistent jobs and then i'll be like hey in a month i've got a cleaning coming up so this is not they're their job better right yeah they have generally consistent clients they're more like like the cleaners i have now they're great and they just they mostly do residential i guess you know cleaning and but they'll do these flips for me um yeah so yeah like but if you're like there's there i mean most cleaners have other gigs so but you kind of want to make sure to get it on their schedule right but so it's it's infrequent but i they also clean our house sometimes and they usually have other jobs so it usually works out i mean it's not bad to have a couple like again a couple handymen a couple cleaners um but usually the turnovers are so far in advance that i i can schedule them and it's a good question but yeah they're, it's not their main thing so it's okay yeah them. they have more gigs like this is part of their main main job Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we answer those questions yeah. over. Um, I see more hands here. So let's go with Linda. Linda, you have a question. And then we got Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. Um, Shauna, do you offer cleaning while during the stay? Like for the nurses, do you offer? I, you know, I don't. I What I do, I, you know, no one's, I mean, it's a good question. It would be like kind of a premium thing to do. Like, hey, we come in once a month. I've thought about it, but then I'm like, I got to, then you have to coordinate it. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to coordinate that. But it's, I do, you know, I always have a decent vacuum. And I leave cleaning supplies. I mean, I definitely think it would up your ante, right? I'm like, hey, why, I'm going to stay here because they offer a free, I mean, a built-in cleaning. But I, but a lot of times with, I've noticed with nurses, they'll, a lot of times, or I've had a few nurses that are traveling and they'll work the night shift. And so they don't really want people coming in. But I, you know, I've thought about it. It's a good question. You'd say try it out and see if it's something people want. I just tend to leave, like I leave a vacuum, I leave a broom, I leave like a Swiffer thing. Um, and, it's, and no one's asked, if someone asked me, I'd be like, oh, sure, I can do that. But it hasn't come up. And I think it's just a coordination thing, I think. But it, you know, it does make, and the, and the, the reason to do it also is that it's, stays clean so I've had some turnovers and they're not like terrible but they definitely didn't clean what that well while they were there so it's kind of like okay like you have to really do a deep clean so that's another benefit um oh, having someone question. going off there yeah thank you yeah any other question Linda you good okay Jennifer um thanks I actually have a follow-on to that um with about the cleaning so Sean have they um because I was talking to, I'm going to start with a new cleaner starting next year. And, you know, I said, oh yeah, you know, we've got someone staying starting like January 1st, they're coming in. They're not leaving until April, beginning of April. She's like, oh, then I'm going to, when I come in, I'm going to need to like spend a long time to do more of a deeper clean. Are you, are you kind of getting that with your cleaners as well? Yeah, so I would say if it's a, a traditional STR, right, it's less wear and tear. They're there for maybe a week at the most. So they're not like leaving crumbs or not building up. But on these turnovers, they're definitely, I mean, it's, I would say they are more involved. So it is going to, it's going to cost more because they're just, they're there longer. And people, when you live somewhere, you don't generally tend to deep clean. So I do think it's a little bit higher of a cost on the turnover because it's just, 
it's like kind of like when you're living in a house for a year and you, it's like, a, it is, so it's kind of, it is, it is more involved. I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, I mean, if it was like weekly or every other day, it'd be like, well, it shouldn't really cost you more, but I would, I would kind of, you know, maybe the first time say, why don't you come? But after that, I kind of want to fix price if you can, because unless, I mean, again, there's always outliers. Like if the oven is, you know, just really dirty and it, but you kind of want to know like, Hey, this is like the estimate. And also, um, the, in STRs, like traditional rentals, I make the, the tenants need to clean it with STRs. I always feel kind of bad asking them because I'm charging a premium, but you could say like it needs to be cleaned and sometimes they will clean it really well, but I just, I don't like insist on it because I'm charging them a lot and I kind of feel like it's an Airbnb. So I haven't, I, I haven't quite navigated that, but I do think it does take more time for longer stays. So, you know, within reason, not like a whole day, right? But Yes, and people yes. have different standards of clean. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Yeah, and I, I think that's absolutely right. Is to get kind of um, get a better sense of okay, yes, I get it needs to be a deeper clean, but yeah, because I think she did kind of say, oh, it might take a whole day. I'm like, really, a whole day? That seemed a little extreme. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so I need to pin her down and kind of figure out kind of a happy medium. Yeah, exactly. And I think that they haven't done it. And I think cleaners always, it's like bidding is hard because they, they don't know what to expect. But if you say, hey, okay, if it's just a normal, like, you know, getting under the sink, not like trash, just, you know, like there's, they can, they should be able to give you that. If not, like maybe shop around, but I mean, I, they tend to kind of, my, even my cleaners, like they don't like having fixed rates, but I'm like, I need to budget, you know, as and I also, I, I trust them too. So I feel like if they are spending a lot more time, I'm not going to be like, I'd rather them do a better job than feel like they have to rush because they're only getting this a fixed amount of money because it's so important to have. I mean, I if you go in and you find a hair or a crumb, it just, it's just, even if it's a longer term, I just feel like it's really important to set the tone of like, of course it's not going to be perfect, but that it's as clean as it can be. Like I had a turnover and I, I thought it was it looked perfect. I went over there, I was wiping everything down and I, I had, it was new, so I like completely forgot to get the carpets cleaned. And then, then they came, they're like, oh, there's dog hair. And I was like, oh my God, I got carpet cleaners right away. But I was just, I had forgotten because I hadn't been in there in a while. So like, you know, definitely get carpets clean if you have them, you know, and have a person like a go-to person. Like I just had my carpet guy come and he literally, it's like, he goes around with a moisture meter and checks, you know, for cat urine and whatnot. And then he actually smells the spot to see what it was and he knew how to treat it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> thorough. And I'm like, I really appreciate that level of, you know, detail because <laughs> treated differently. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, find, again, find people that you like to work with and, you know, if, if you trust them and they charge you an extra hour, you don't want them to take advantage of like, oh, it was a deep turnover. Like, you can't be like, yeah. oh, like, I think this is a range maybe of, of reasonableness, right? Um, because some people I think you know, they, it's a business thing. I think, oh, they just, you know, they have, they're doing, I don't know. Some people have different expectations or, you know, I think it's good to be upfront about it too, but you, they don't like, they do, cleaners do not like to get like fixed bits. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tricky. But and and they are, Jenny, for some cleaners that they do have a fixed amount, like try to keep shopping, like Shauna said. Yeah, don't, I mean, some may have the hourly, but I know people here in Georgia that they have used them and they're like a fit, fit you know, like, 130 and they just clean and then if you want to dip clean in this a little bit more you know and so on right right okay yeah. yeah that's a good that's a good point and and like i said we're we're just starting out this relationship starting next year so there's some you know there's just some of that figuring out time and and totally. i'm okay with that but um but you're right you're i think it's just having good communication um and then we'll just kind of see how it goes and if it seems like it's working out and you know because naturally i really i do want it to be clean i want to feel comfortable because i'm not there I, I would love to be have your situation trying to be able to go in and just make sure everything is great but unfortunately i can't do that and i'm actually looking for maybe someone to kind of be that person um i would over find there. someone i mean because like also, when you're cleaning, you don't step back and I'll walk in, I'll be like, okay, the blanket is, I go on like thumbtack and find someone like, I'll pay you like a hundred bucks. Like if it's really just every three months and send you pictures and like, here's my turnover checklist and like actually FaceTime with you, like, so, or even, you know, maybe a handyman could do that. But I think it's worth having boots on the ground. I just didn't tell you. Like with new cleaners, I, I guess because I grew up with vacation rentals that my mom would always go in and fuss over everything. And I guess I inherited that. But I just, 
it's just, it's really important. I think then they, and cleaners might think, oh, it's clean, but is it like hotel clean, right? There's like different levels of clean. There's right. this like a house cleaner, like, oh, this, and there's just like, you walk in and it's like, it's, it's spotless and the towel is just laid just so, and, and the, and the bottle of wine is, it's like that level of like detail that not everyone has. And I'm, to me, I'm, I'm very uptight about that. I don't know if it's, but I do feel like people appreciate that. And it sets the tone for like, okay, I'm going to take care of this place. They I, took their yes. time and, you know, that's kind of why I do it. And I want, I want it to be a good experience, but there is the bigger picture is I want them to take care of it and feel like I'm, and I also, you know, I always, I want my cleaner to say, oh, something was loose or wiggly. Don't just, just tell me so I can fix it. I want to know about like a loose doorknob or whatever it is. So that stuff is annoying. And oftentimes tenants will not tell you or if there's a leak under the sink, that's a slow drip. They will just be like, they don't want to bother you. I'm like, you're not bothering me. I want to know about it because it will do sure. damage and it's not good for you. So um, yeah, I, I think having a cleaner and that person that maybe can get supplies and that just maybe is a student or someone that wants some extra cash it's well worth it for peace of mind too right you know if you're not there yes yes that's really really what it is I just want the peace of mind and I want you're like you I want to I want people to come in and feel good about it and have things kind of be in a certain place and way and make sure that it just that it's all handled and 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 there's someone there that I can trust to be that extra set of eyes. So exactly, yeah. And I, I mean, I would be like, you know, have that checklist, even put pictures on it and print it out and like put it in a binder in the cleaning closet and be like, here's my check. I mean, it's it sounds like you know micromanaging, but I think if people appreciate that direction, they want like my cleaner is like, oh, and I'll go and be like, hey, great job, you know, I sandwich it. But here's some things I noticed. <laughs> like I'm always really nice about it but I I just like they know like they're like oh thank you because if I don't tell them and just go with someone else like they and they you know I'm nice I'm, I'm never like oh you missed a spot or the toilet was this and that like that doesn't help no one wants to hear that but I think if you're constructive about it and then they'll then you can train them and if they're not trainable then it's probably time to move on but they need to like it's just again it's a totally different level of you know you can't open the drawer in the cutlery drawer there cannot be crumbs in there like Versus if someone's cleaning your house, you're like, oh, I, you know, who cares? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the cords need to be organized. I don't know. It just has to have this I really, I think it's so important that they, it's, yeah, that's all, doc- I think documenting and systematizing. And then that way you're like, okay, here's my list. If you check the list and they're like, here's my list, you know, here's the pictures. And that way you're not like explaining it over and over. Cause it just gets annoying. <laughs> you're like, well, I want it like this. And everyone has their idea of not that you have to like be that prescriptive, but I think it's helpful just to be like, you know, the soap should, the soap should be X amount full. You know, you don't want it too empty, but you don't like, there's like stupid things like that, that I look at. I'm like, if you come in and there's this much soap, you're like, well, you know, it just feels cheap. Right. When it's like half full, you're like, okay, like that's, my brain goes down those rabbit holes. <laughs> awesome. Um, <Thank> you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Shana. So no more question. I do have then the last one. So how, how long it took you to see your profit? Like to start you know, seeing your gain the, or something like the last one, I usually run the numbers. So I mean, I'm kind of simple math. I'm like, my mortgage is this, right? You mm-hmm. know, my, my gross Texas. margin is this. Right. And so I usually won't do it unless I see a decent profit. Like, I mean, there is a lot, or there's like the longer term, like there's the ad, there's like, you know, you have to figure out what your levers are. Is it like, did you want immediate cash flow? Do you want, I mean, to me, I'm really a buy and hold person. Like, I want the long term appreciation and tax benefits and I want the residual income. So if it's like cash flowing $100, I'm like, okay, yeah, but like five years later, the rents are going to go up. My mortgage is the same. I can leverage the equity out of it. So to me, Mm-hmm. I would prioritize like equity building over immediate. Maybe it just depends on where you're at, but I, I want some generally something, General, um, yeah. but you know, I think with long, if short term, it, it is more about the cash flow with longer term. You're more about maybe appreciation, but if, there has to be profit or you have to see like, Hey, like once I get in there and I paint the walls and I do some updates, there should be some decent profit. It's, it's, I don't have like a number. It's more just like, Hey, like couple hundred hopefully it just depends on your market and there's benefits too of not I mean I don't think it's all that cash flow there's a lot of other benefits to real estate and again sometimes like 
we've had rentals for years that were maybe a little negative and then we refied out and the rents went up and now they're positive. But I knew in the long run, it was like, we're just breaking even. And I was fine with that because the rents are going to go up and the mm -hmm. mortgage is not going to go up. So the rents are going up and you're right. So it's kind of like, what is your strategy? And to me, it's like, I like long-term. That's why I don't love, I, I do flip, but I don't love them because it's just like another job and there's no long-term appreciation or passive income from them. So yeah. Um, yeah, but it's all you just I think you have to like really figure out where what you want and what makes sense. And if you have the luxury of maybe not getting great cash flow, but you know, it's coming, then you know, that's, to me, that's what an investment is like, an, it's an asset that you'll know over time will benefit you. Um, if that makes sense. Exactly. Yes, it does. It does. Okay, so now that we have questions over, I'm gonna stop our recording. So we don't keep okay. just <laughs> dragging it. <laughs>